Hey, how's it going everyone? Justin again, as always, thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. Mm. Big shout out to my boy Clay from Coons Trucking. If you haven't checked out his channel, make sure you check it out. I will post the link down in the description. He posts regularly and he posts Cornwell Monday reviews. He posts tool reviews. He's been doing really well. People know him very well in the tool community. They've been around for a while. We all know and love Clay. Make sure to check out his channel. That being said, today I have something a little bit special for you guys out there, especially my DIYers, and even more so for my Jeep lovers. Today I bring to you a how to disassemble, or at least take apart, the uh, four liter cylinder head on an inline six. I don't do very many repair videos. Everybody knows that I'm very busy at work. Uh, I don't really have time to film, first of all, because I'm trying to make the shop money. Secondly, uh, I don't want to put off the wrong impression by filming everything that I do and then make them mad because I'm I'm on his I'm on the company dime. You know, I'm, I'm making money for him. That's my job. That's what I'm supposed to do. So, but today uh, he actually said it was cool for me to record a few little blip clips here and there of how to take things off so that way I can remember and have something to come back to. And what better way for me to remember how I took something apart than to actually do little tiny blip clips and a video of it so that way at the end of the day I can tie them all together into one video and if I need a reference point I can come back to that video, watch it again, and I know exactly how I took something apart. I recommend those of you DIYers out there that are actually just starting to step into automotive or maybe you're doing some shade tree mechanic stuff at home or you're working underneath you know, an awning or your garage or whatever you got going on. If you're doing some repairs, I strongly and encourage every single one of you guys out there to try to film the process or at least take pictures of what it is that you're doing so that that way it helps you to formulate like a memory or at least a go-to to come back to. Uh, and then that way you'll know exactly where you left off when you're trying to reassemble and put something back together. That being said, there will not be a second portion to this video. Uh, the cylinder head does have to go down to the machine shop. So you won't get to see that process. It's going to go to the machine shop. We probably won't see the cylinder head for about a week, week and a half. Depends on how jam-packed busy the machine shop is. So going back together is pretty much the same thing as coming apart only in reverse order. So as long as you're organized, and we'll talk about organization a little bit more as we go down the road, but uh, as, as long as you're organized and you have some kind of like, uh, you know, I don't know, I guess, I, I guess you have to be a little bit OCD as far as like where you're putting the parts that you're taking off uh, and so forth. And you keep them in a nice little pile. Some people do party lines, things like that. Other people just put them in little tiny collection trays or magnetic trays. Uh, however you gotta stay organized, just make sure you stay organized so that way the uh, reassembly process is just that much easier for you guys. Uh, that being said, we will go ahead and we'll dive into today's video. I'll show you all the little blip clips from today of how to take off the four liter uh, cylinder head off of a 2001 Jeep Cherokee Sport. Thanks as always for watching and I hope you enjoy. All right, this is a 2001 Jeep Cherokee with the four liter. Gonna do a cylinder head job on this. Start off by disconnecting the throttle, bracket cable, air filter housing. This is giving myself reference for electrical connectors. Uh, might have to pull off the fans, so that way we can actually take off the power steering pump, as well as the AC unit. I might take the battery out so I can put the AC unit over in the battery tray. Let's get it rolling. Uh, taking out the air cleaner gets better accessibility to the intake and exhaust bolts. You're going to need to get your arm up underneath there. I think there's 13 millimeters across that too. All right, next we got to take the fans out of the way. So we can get the power steering pump pulley bolts. This one's actually easier. You don't have to pull the pulley off. It's got holes inside of it. it comes to the back side so you can get to these. All right, there's really no nice way to do this, so we're just gonna have to drain the coolant. So, coolant hose is down here, right above the gearbox. It's gonna splish splash everywhere. It's just the way that it goes, but the coolant's gotta be drained and the oil has to be changed. 
and the adjuster for the drive belt tension is actually this 15 millimeter nut right here um, just above one of these pulleys here just below the power steering so we'll loosen that up take our drive belt off annotate the direction of the drive belt so we know how to put it back when we go back together the uh, hardest part about this whole thing really is the uh, getting the right 12 millimeter deep thread bolts I think those are 13 but uh you can take the AC in it without having to take the AC out. I'm going to set it over here to the side where the battery tray is. Take the power steering pump off without draining the power steering. Put it over here where the air cleaner box used to be. Alright, forgot to note, you will have to loosen this idler pulley here in order for when you're unloosening the slack on it, it'll actually move its way down, 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 and that's what creates the slack. So I forgot to mention that. Make sure you loosen that up first. And it is left turn to come off. Okay, there's three 13 millimeter deeps. One, two, and then one down here at the bottom would make it three. Putting in this magnetic tray here for safekeeping, and we should be able to just pull this whole power steering unit to the side. All right, cool, that's out of the way. Gives us plenty of room. Now we'll get the AC off. All right, now we got our bolts out. Uh, we'll just take them and we'll lay them down in the battery tray so we can just pick this AC unit up. Move it on into the battery tray. That keeps it out of our way. And it allows us to get to these two bolts for this bracket that go into the head. Now, I won't have to take this off. We can just take out the two bolts. And we should still be able to pry this up and away from that pulley, so not a big deal there. Uh, there's a ground strap in the back of the head that we'll have to take off. And I think that's like a crankshaft position sensor. We'll have to take that bolt off. And then pretty much we can start unbolting our exhaust and intake and then we'll just lay that to the side valve cover comes off here's the uh again gotta get a 12 millimeter for that can't remember that and these are 14 millimeter uh bolts for that bracket uh, this must be a ford bolt because it ended up being an 11 millimeter and it looks like 14 millimeter for the intake and exhaust hardware. And let's see, so you guys can see the bottom ones are a little bit tricky to get to. You gotta reach your hand way up under to get to them. And that's sitting on some dowel pins. And now the valve cover can come off, but you can see I just rested the exhaust to the side. It's pretty easy. Valve cover bolts are 11 millimeter. All right, 13 millimeter bolts holding down the rockers all the way back. Gonna try to put them in order. Gonna call this one, two, and so forth all the way down. All right, front to back. This is in the front, goes all the way back. I have them set up in a little line here. And then we got our party line full of push rods. Keep them in order. That way they can all go back, otherwise we will have problems, possible lifter tick if they don't go back because each uh, push rod wears the hydraulic valve differently. All right, the push rods and rockers out and the ground strap undone. We are ready for this cylinder head to come out, but we do need, looks like a 13 millimeter, 12 point deep, not sure if that's gonna be three inch drive or half inch drive. But it's like that throughout the whole thing. These are 12 points as well. So there is a purpose for 12 point sockets, guys. And taking a cylinder head off of an inline six Jeep is just one of them. And here's the makeshift contraption I'm using 3 8 12 point 13 millimeter with a half inch to 3 8 step down and a 3 8 universal wobble. You're pressed against the firewall pretty good. So. Going back together and torquing that properly is gonna be interesting to say the least. Note to self, the second one in on the head bolts has a uh, bare shaft looking deal on it. And same thing with the second one to the rear. All right, I'm leaving this bolt in back here in the corner cause it keeps hitting the firewall but I'm gonna try to use that as like a lever. So I wanna gently pry the cylinder head loose. Let's see if I can get it loose here. Let's see here. Come on, baby. Okay. 
try a better angle. This is really difficult to do with one hand. So, let me get up in there a little bit more. But at any rate, I'm gonna pry this loose. All right, the cylinder head is off. Gasket remains on the engine. This is how the gasket should look. I want to clean out the cylinders, get this head sent to the machine shop. We're good to go. Oh, and if you're looking to take out the studs, it takes an E-Torx 8 to remove the studs. All right, so pretty cool stuff right there. I mean, it gives you a chance to see where some of the bolts are, where some of the nuts are. Uh, it gives you a chance to see how to take things apart without necessarily having to evacuate or deplete the system, like the power steering pump. We didn't have to drain that. We were able to set that to the side where the air cleaner housing was. Taking that air cleaner housing out helps to be able to put that part there and it gives you more access from because you will have to reach your hand up and underneath the intake where the exhaust is to get to those 14 millimeter uh, bolts that are holding that intake to the side of the cylinder head. Uh, I ended up using a little gear wrench, 14 millimeter ratchet wrench, uh, because it was really tight. And then for the ones that were in the middle, I had used a uh, six inch extension with a 14 millimeter deep uh, impact socket on a regular ratchet and was able to get those two off. So overall, that's probably the hardest part about the entire cylinder head job is just being able to reach up there blindly and uh, being able to just touch it and then crack it loose and then work it out without dropping it. That's probably the hardest part about the whole job. Uh, also, we saw that 12 points are actually a pretty, and it's a necessity. If you have a Jeep and you have an inline six, you are gonna need a 13 millimeter deep, three eighths. Uh, torquing everything down is gonna be a little bit more trickier. You saw in the video I had to use an extension with a universal joint just so I can get it out and away from that firewall lip that comes around. Now on my Jeep, and if it's your personal Jeep, and you, you do the same thing, on my old Jeep that I had, I actually took an extension with the Universal and I just kind of shoved the firewall in a little bit and that gave me a lot better access so that way I could try to torque it down. Um, but you know, going back together on somebody else's vehicle, I might have to come up with a new method. Hopefully the torque spec isn't so great because I can fit a 3 8 torque wrench on that 3 8 drive uh, 12 point socket and torque it down. I don't remember if it's torque angle or not. That'll be something I'll have to look up when I actually go to torque the cylinder head back down. Keeping the push rods in order in a box, very, very common. People do that all the time, especially in the racing circuit uh, to keep all those, thing, uh, all those push rods uh, in the same exact place that they were when you took them out so you could put them all back in. Because as we know, uh, each hydraulic lifter and push pin might wear differently, so they're not all gonna be the exact same. So they're all gonna wear just a little bit differently, and that could cause a lifter tick if you're not putting them back in the same order you took them apart. So make sure you keep that in mind. Uh, there's no real lash setting on these roller, uh, on these rockers that, that come with the inline six. From what I remember the last time when I did the cylinder head, uh, it was just a torque spec. You just torqued them down and they were good. So there's no lash setting for it. You don't have to worry about setting lash or anything like that. Uh, we didn't have to take out any refrigerant, so that's cool. Uh, we were able just to set it over there in the battery tray, as you guys saw, and take the two top bolts out of that bracket. And I just laid them in the bracket for safekeeping for when we go to put everything back together. Probably one of the more easier cylinder head jobs that you'll ever do is on the inline six, especially since you don't have to worry about timing chains, timing belts, anything like that. There's hardly anything on the passenger side of the engine and very few things on the driver's side of the engine. And that exhaust, literally you can just push it off and it'll just drape to the side so you can slip it right back on when you're ready. So really, in my opinion, probably one of the more easier cylinder head jobs to do. Again, if you haven't already checked him out, make sure you check out my buddy Clay from Coons Trucking. I'll put the link down in the description. Thanks again, as always, for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Cheers.